Hey there, and welcome back to Cursed Seeds, an educational monster train series where we struggle through the toughest challenges around. Now, this one, it was submitted as Blurst, which is a fun way of saying it's cursed and then it becomes blessed. So the description I received was that there was some amount some major amount of damage that the submitter didn't think they'd be able to recover from and then things fell together quickly thereafter so he felt they, they felt that it was a cursed start potentially and then things clean up now that said some people are scoring 78k on this particular run so if you just briefly look at that you can imagine that this is an absolutely dominant position you are pre-relentless killing every single floating boss from seraph to divinity you might be pre-relentless killing fell i mean the theoretical highest score in the game is in the i think it are low 100 k's so if you consider that you're not it's not too crazy but still this is a high scoring run this is very dominant so maybe this is a little more blessed than cursed is the way I would imagine this, but all good. I, I do think it's interesting overcoming some of the challenging early game stages of your run and trying to pull out the victory afterwards. Oftentimes, if you just survive long enough, something will show up that will get you the win. And that's the way I like to view it in, in very weak feeling runs. I had a run on mobile recently. I, w I was on a vacation, and when I'm on vacation, I can't really record, so I play Monster Train on mobile, and the run had no multi-strikes. My backline was simply a self-infused paraffin enforcer that was quick, nothing else. This run became a winning line because there was a, an endless remnant host, and what I was doing was dazing bosses, so Divinity couldn't attack on top floor, and... I was self-killing the remnant host behind the paraffin enforcer, and it was eventually scaling to a point where it could win. And then my front line was Harvest Rector. Why do I tell you this? Because this rune was completely doomed. I think I had 40 shards walking into rings 8, and then I duped and then picked up 50 from a temple right away and walked in at a clean 100, and... I just jumped 60 shards on ring eight and said, all right, hopefully this gets it. And we skated by the victory just because I hit that endless on remnant host in the last shot. So, I mean, things like that can come together. It was a pretty cool run. I kind of wish I could have recorded it. But on the upside, it means that I don't have to spend, you know, 50 minutes talking. It, the run was like 20 minutes long because I'm not talking and I'm just blitzing cards. But uh, but yeah, so interesting things about just surviving long enough to to win, essentially. And I think that's very relevant in a lot of runs, especially because this is not a very commonly submitted champion for cursed runs, in my opinion. Sentient doesn't show up that often. There's a reason for that. I think she's a mid champion but usually if you hit like cultivating it's something right she's not bad but she's not good either and i do think this is particularly relevant for what i'm talking about because she has a very bad early game she doesn't ever she's not scaling right so you're relying on hitting a unit that does damage and if you lack that so maybe you miss like razor sharp edge or something your backline simply doesn't do enough damage to clear whatever talos daedalus whatever it is and that can become a quick wall for you it's also very easy to lose to overtaking shards early on because bosses get simply too strong and despite the fact that she's tanky she's not survivable and relentless unless you have you know a ton of regeneration or something so kind of an interesting one we'll have frozen lance as well so we'll have a good incant line possibly there are sirens on this I, I don't really know what to expect maybe there's an offering token offering monument rather infinite in here if people are scoring 78k very comfortably but we'll see we'll see either way let me explain what's going on if you're joining us for the first time First of all, hello, welcome. Basically, the idea of this is I'm playing viewer submitted runs. So if you're playing Covenant 25 Monster Train with no mutators and you either struggle with a run or find it particularly blessed or somewhere in between in an interesting way, you can go to your run summary, gener generate a three word combo, the challenge link like you see here at the top of the screen, and I will play it for you on the channel. 
eventually. I have a long list. Right now I'm working backwards through the list that came up since I was on vacation. And there's been a whole bunch of submissions. This was just happened to be the first one on the list. And I said, you know what? It looks interesting enough. Fair enough. Let's go. So here we are. The otherwise we're currently on, what are we on? Like a 60 win streak. We've had a pretty good string of these. I think I've still only lost what like maybe three on this particular series there are some that are particularly doomed uh, but the last one we did manage to pull together eight triple multi strike plus 25 plus 10 enforcer infused draft uh they're rather not triple multi strike there were triple of the multi striking units i realize that's kind of confusing sometimes uh, but anyway we had tons of them we had a plus 50 health in can armor to guard of the unnamed with a rail forger's hammer there was a founding seal which was pretty sick and a burnout two dark calling one rector line that was just being very silly to make these drafts functional we missed the harvest line but i think it ended up being pretty good overall uh, the replay that episode there's a sick harvest line in there that i thought might be present based on early sites and was i imagine that's very strong i think someone did play it in the run summary now that i'm remembering it but regardless let's go ahead and get in hopefully we can get this so as always do like comment and subscribe if you haven't already those things are awesome look at our community grow it's really cool i love seeing it a lot of people love monster train as it turns out very fun uh, so let's get in on it let me see if I actually remember to turn off the mod like a smart person. Hey, let's go. All right. Cool. So I hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing just peachy. Nothing too terribly exciting to report. It's the first day back for me on a work week, which is funny. I had a week off due to, well, vacation. I've been talking about it a little bit. But the the thing is, is that I had recorded for the whole week, so you guys never had a downtime. Uh, that was the Cobalt Core week that I recorded recently. It's probably like a month ago at this point, but still playing the game, so it's fun. I might not, I'm probably not going to do a full week of it, but, you know, the game had just come out, so it was kind of a fun little diversion, so... Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get in on the run. As before, we are Default Awoken, Default Stygian, pretty good stuff. And we're facing, that uh, seems okay overall. We have a Double Barrel Daedalus, Rage Arcus, and Sap Seraph. We have Restoration Detonation, Energy Siphon, and Wildwood Custodian. These are all fine. I don't hate any of these cards. Energy Siphon's pretty low impact, but I do at least have a payoff in Restoration Detonation. It's something. I could imagine worse cases for it, like, you know, if I had Forgon Power or something like that. Restoration Detonation, any kind of big heals early on for Sentient is very good. I will be using that a lot. It's also just generally a pretty darn good card. Usually never like the strongest, but I do like this card a lot because with a 10 piercing, it, cle it clears the 100 hit point threshold with a piercing attached to it, which I think is a very important threshold into the Divinity and just generally in the ring 7 and 8, so... And then Wildwood Custodian is also here. He's not terrible, right? If you can't find a better infusion for something, you could always jam this into a Siren or whatever. Drawing more cards is good. Usually you're looking for scaling, but I'm never quite mad about it. All right. Temples today are three. Oh, only three in the early game. Interesting. Then we have five, six, and seven. So four temples, nothing too crazy, but all straightforward. Not a great alignment, but at least there's something. It could be much worse. Just it, just think about it. It could be worse. I'll take it. We have a removal dupe on steel side on eight. It's nice. We like it. There's a trinket shop with money on seven and a cave. Maybe I can use it. Would like that. There is competing with a magic shop and some other stuff. Nothing particularly exciting, but you know. No magic shop on six. We have a random hellvent horde. It's not terrible, actually. Hellvent horde is okay. It's got money if I'm thinking of going to that trinket shop later. Steel Shop competing with it has a removal, though, which is nice. Maybe I'll need it. Maybe I won't. Hard to say, but, you know, it's there. I like having good Steel Shops available, even if I don't end up needing them. I sometimes will just path away just for the removals, so. Speaking of good Steel Shops, there's another one on five, this time with a Cavern and a Vortex. It's really strong. I'll probably still need it by then, so that's cool. Competes with a fairly weak Magic Shop, but, you know, it's there if I need the health, I suppose. Another no steel. Oh, wait, never mind. There is a steel. It's another good one on four, actually. Wow, triple good steel shops. This makes it pretty likely you're going to hit your multi strikes or whatever you're looking for. 
It's not guaranteed, of course, but still, seeing three of these that you want to go to in a row is very nice. Now, the Magic Shops suffer a little bit, but there's at least an Awoken Banner with the Magic Shop on four if I need to go that way. Good Infusion fodder at that point. Early game, Steel Shop, Stygian Banner on two, Magic Shop, Awoken Banner, Flexibility, I like it. Probably going to the Stygian Banner, just because it's a good incanting line, that's good scaling, I might want to look at that. Shark wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, Hellvent, Awoken Banner on three, Random Stygian Banner Horde on three as well. Honestly, a pretty good early game. A lot of banner flexibility and all the banners are good. This is Sentient, so I will be looking at Horde first. Lightstone Casing or Totem Fragment? There are some things I can envision with Lightstone Casing, but I do really like the Totem Fragment because Totem Fragment means top floor Sentient Restoration Detonation just pummels things in the early game. This is a very early game high value and it also can play nicely in the late game as well right you know big mini boss walks up and then i let's say i hit him with a plus 30 holdover restoration detonation guy gets absolutely blasted for 600 damage or something i mean that sounds crazy but that's actually true right because plus 30 goes 40 health here then you times five it to the damage 40 times five is 200 i mean that's 200 damage to the enemy and then if i have spell weakness too guys taking 600 that basically kills a mini boss this is a really good relic just don't ignore it i'm gonna take it we're gonna go dark forge hmm bristling explosive well i'm always gonna click bristling here it's sad because i prefer cultivating 99 times out of 10 but fair enough i'm never gonna take explosive here we are weak enough that i don't want to take this relic i could see it being bad i don't want to i'm not going to be spoiled by the people who have lost here this doesn't mean anything this could just be playing poorly but I do think taking this horde contributes to that. We're going to play a chill here. There's no reason to go hard. Mark of Invasion. We have the heals to make this work, so I'm going to click this. This is risky, though, because she, Sentient does take just like a truckload of damage all of a sudden. Right, so how you actually can do this is... I can take three and preserve her HP... Or I can eat a lot of this damage and take 10 here. There are pros and cons, right? Because if I take the train steward and sack him first, then what I'm actually doing is, I mean, I have to take an ember drain later on. I'm taking 12 coming up. We should respect. I'm going to go train steward in front, die. Sentient in back. We get the one frozen lance here. And then... Yeah, actually, I take, what is it, six? I'm okay with six here. Honestly, I think trading a little bit for some early health is fine. Uh, we do lose the collector as a result of this line, though. Makes the money not really as worth it as it could have been, but it's all right. Well, we get the restoration detonation, which does just super clear top floor. Guy takes 135 damage, which is, you know, pretty ridiculous when you think about it. I may as well save this health. What's coming up? I'm definitely getting a Frozen Lance, so I can just play that into the Forge Disciple next turn when she ascends and gets even more spell weakness. You're going to see this. I think I actually can get her killed. <laughs> yeah, I can. Look at that. Nicely done. Shoot the boss. Fair enough. All straightforward. I'm just looking for some kind of healing here, and we'll be all right. I'm thinking, do I need to take these hits? I don't have a lot of damage on this floor. I'm taking 10 coming up. Chains is really annoying early game because I'm probably going to get hit here. The question you have to ask yourself is, is Wildwood Custodian relevant? Buys me a turn of 5 damage, maybe? Eh, fair, I suppose. He gives me Ember Drain. I think I'm going to go this route. With the Frozen Lance? Yeah, okay, fair enough. I don't feel great about this. Ah, but we actually... This looks bad until you just high roll the Restoration Detonation and win the combat. I mean, it's a spell weakness, right? Totem Fragment. You really should take this when it shows up like that. It's just good. So I traded 6 Pyre Health for 25 gold, basically, because I missed the Collector as a result of my decisions. It's okay, right? I could have... If I had played the other line in the early game, I think we would have gotten the collector because I would have had a train steward behind Sentient. It's something to consider. 
But uh, it's hard to make that call because you could very easily draw worse and take more damage to the boss, potentially losing. So I really want Wildwood Sap, but I'm also potentially in a situation where I desperately need Steel Enhancer, anything that says damage. I'm going to click Steel Enhancer here. And then I'm going to take Flash Freeze because I want a ping that's good. Yes, Flash Freeze is also excellent. I can't really click it here right now, but it's great for ring three bosses. This eight Frostbite does a lot of work in Relentless. I don't really feel like I have a great Magic Shop play. I mean, Holdover Restoration Detonation is fine. I don't know. Minus ones are okay here. They're not great. I'm going to put them into what a Restore. It's like, okay, fine. Otherwise, I think a Siren is better. I think if we see a Shark in a Large Stone, that could be really good too. I mean, we have some options. I'm going to go Stygian Banner here. Oh my god, Endless plus 25. Give me the Shark. This is the hardest decision I have ever had to make in my life. Why would you do this monster train? There is the perfect shark. Endless plus 25. I'm going to take the Gorgon. Let me explain why. Oh man, where was cultivating sentient? This is a tough call. I think... I think I can certainly win this run with Titan Sentry, but the one thing I want to draw attention to is what is my Relentless plan? I don't have one yet. Eel Gorgon answers that in a pretty cozy way. So I think we're going to solve the Eel Gorgon. I think if we had Cultivating, I might be more inclined to look at Sen Titan Sentry here, B Big Hot Shark. God, he's so good here. This is crazy tough. But I think with Spike Sentient, which already kind of answers backline, you know, kind of, if I can keep her alive. As a result of that, I think it's Gorgon here. Okay, now what I would really like to hit, I think actually I do need a plus 25 or we just lose on a sweet boss on ring two. We're going to take that here. Yeah, I mean, just click that for sure. Cool. I'm looking for like a plus 10 or large stone. I'm going to reroll this. There's a large stone. There is a large stone. We're going to take the money in the middle and I'm going to grab the large stone and this makes this is very cozy into our upcoming runs. Very cozy here. We, we can't lose ring two at this point. We also can't lose Daedalus. So, I mean, we're we're cozy. I can take this money, no problem. The spikes, whatever. I have large stone down. It's it's good. This is going to be a top floor play because this is not a great setup. Ah, that's a mistake. Gorgon first. Ah, you fool. I take an Ember Drain. Kind of doesn't really matter here. I can't exactly play all of this anyway. Yeah, I mean, actually, I mean, I guess I could have played like two re regenerations here, but whatever. It's fine. Phew. All right. I do get one turn of Wildwood Custodian. That's pretty fun. Cool. We clear top floor. That's neat. <laughs> I guess I'm going to play the regen. There's really, I mean, there's reasons to click cards, right? Yeah, there's reasons to click cards. Sure. It saves hits. Ah, Steel Enhancer. My scaling is good. I am a genius. I'm going to play out the Train Steward because there's no reason not to take the Restore. Fine. All right. I think we're chilling here. I'm going to go ahead and... This is an interesting one. If I draw into a Restoration Detonation, I would love to connect that with the boss. Three, I can get a nine by eight. That's not very good. I'm just going to go ahead and Energy Siphon, Energy Siphon here. And then shoot him for nine and get some Frostbite in. I could have played that a different way, but I don't think it matters that much. Cool, yeah. We're going to just absolutely... Shadow Realm this guy in front and then take some regeneration procs and we're super chilling. The spikes in back go away as my alarm goes off. The poor cat screams. Man, I make that mistake a lot in the mornings, don't I? I need to like set an alarm for myself to turn off my alarm. It's awful. <laughs> it's truly abysmal. Am I going to take Sharpen? No. Sharpen is doubly bad here because the spikes even go away. Glimmer's not terrible. It's a great plus 30 target if we see it. I should take the... Oh, but Bramble Lash. Wait a second. Bramble Lash, I have Spike Sentient. All right, sure. It's a weird, weird common pick to see, but fine. 
Ice Tornado, Energy Siphon, Flash, Freeze. I'm going to skip all of... Uh, do I want another ping? No, not really. I'll skip it. One is enough. Okay. I would love to find a Siren of the Sea infusion. Pretty much it. My opinion. So we're going to Tunnel Vision the Stygian banner here, I think. Sure. Horde says Thorn Casing. I'll take the Thorn Casing because Titan's Claws are super dumb here. And I might see Preserve Thorns, I suppose. Or a Thorn Fruit later. Yeah, Siren of the Sea. Here we go. Winning Line. Winning Line Activate. Form of Eel Gorgon. Cool. Now I'm basically looking for the entire rest of the run. Oh, baby, Spell Chain Steel Enhancer? Sign me up, right? This is also the best possible X5 target I could see here. That's a bunch of scaling for him. We're going to make those plays. Go to 50 shards, no problem. We're ready for any event they show us. Good old Wingmaker. Now, hold up. This is nuts, right? I don't want Wingmaker. I go do nothing, Hef's Consolation. And now we're back. We're back to two space Eel Gorgon with killer stats. Yeah, this means. Oh, buddy, this means now I take space and make a second one of these, and this run pops off. Awesome. Awesome. That's really strong, in fact. That's really good. I'm very pleased with that. It's not quite minor refraction, but it's still amazing. Remember, Gorgon first. I also can stop this bomb from hitting me, which is pretty neat. Thank you, Flash Freeze. Very cool. Excellent. No reason to take bomb hits. We do want to just keep playing cards up here. Although I think... Let's stop some of this damage coming into Sentient. Plus one is not the biggest loss here. It's okay. Alright. We're just kind of going to be pummeling with playing cards here. Scaling is your friend. That's a scary looking bomb. Alright, well we're going to just straight up lose Sentient from this ridiculous turn. But I do think we get away with it because the Gorgon is so powerful. <laughs> that's, that's a terrifying turn. I still don't really feel that scared about it. We can pummel one. And I think it is correct to keep just playing these. I take one. Could be much worse. Not good, but it's not bad. The Steel Enhancer is doing work. I mean, we can save a lot here as well with the big blast. Eh, we actually avoid all damage there. I'm pretty sure this solo Gorgon just obliterates this combat anyway. We are going to respect and play all of our cards on floor. Even with no spells played. Wild. Eh, fair enough. Cool. And then you just drop a train steward in front to take a hit. This is honestly not that bad. Gorgon is strong enough that we're okay. I can see how you might have lost here if you had played another route, but truly, Endless Shark wins this as well, by the way, if there were any doubt in your mind. Siren Song. It's decent, but I don't really want to elevator things out of Sentience Reach. I'm going to take the Rail Spike. This helps me play more spells in a turn. They do give me a shark eventually. I don't really need to do anything fancy here. Shark is not bad, though. Simply taking a shark gives me collectors on mid-floor. He's not bad. He's, like, good enough that I'm happy to just have him. I miss a couple of incants because of it. It lightens the load on... It lightens the load on Sentient. Man, we'll take shark. It's fine. Cards... Card draw? Draw is good here. Do I need this ring six dupe on Gorgon to win here? I don't think I do. I think we, with our setup, we could, we should cleave Arcus with only one of them, which lets me get the ring eight dupe on it. Yeah, so I think we can take draw first. Yes, draw first. This also opens up in case. Oh wait. This is Malika, isn't it? Ah, oh, Malika. I can definitely take Corrupted Cloud here. Now, hold up. If I can get Broken Wheel, there's out five units. 
I could potentially use this to sack Titan Sentry, take him and then he immediately pays out and then dies. The nice thing is if I can get Endless on Spike Sentient, she's nuts. She's better Shark if you can get Endless on her. It's really worth doing. Also, my guy is just not that at risk here. It's true. It's true. My guy's really not at risk. Let's take the Cloud for sure. I'm thinking Cloud Wheel. And then we move on. That's pretty interesting. Now I think we play it chill. I was going to go hard here and take, like, relics and stuff, but... And removals are suddenly less important. So magic shops are pretty decent. Huh, fair enough. I'll go... I'm going to pivot off that steel shop. I was... Because my thought was I was going to go steel shop, have a use for an endless if they show it to me again, and then take removals on train stewards. But suddenly Malika means those train stewards are gone. Wildwood Custodian is gone. Shark probably is also gone, and all I need to do is keep Sentient, win these next two combats, and we're okay. So let's go right instead. Look at some magic shops. I don't know. There's nothing I'm going to want at this banner. Thorned Hollow. Oh, boy. We're not going to take the Relic in the middle to chill out a bit. I am simply going to do some minus one plus tens on restores. These are good for keeping afloat. They're also good to make these plays a little easier. Holdover. <laughs> hold over Bramble Lash real quick. I do have Spike Sentient. Now let me look real quick before I make this call. They show me Cultivating. How do I feel about that? Cultivating. Very good, in fact. Very strong. Hold over Bramble Lash, though, with the Totem Fragment is pretty sick. That does just, you know, auto-kill pretty much everything. Pretty much everything dies. I think we're going to do that. I'm going to go Bristling too, especially because of the possibility of Endless here. So let's hold over Bramble Lash. Now, I would love to wait for the opportunity for a minus two. But is it important that I minus one it now? Because I think if you put a minus one in this now, you're guaranteed to make it through. You, you win these next several combats. But you might have to drop drop it otherwise, right? What if I draw this on the same turn I'm playing Gorgon, right? You're just, you just lose it. So I think, in truth, I'm going to play it chill, and I'm going to take the minus one here, because I'm respect... I'm choosing to respect Cloud and Wheel a little bit. If I didn't have them, I think I would just kind of vibe and do nothing special here, and then we would just take a minus two later. But let's respect. If I see a minus two later, I'll stick it in a, a Roken's Rail Spike or something. This is just a cozy card that will do a good job. And I'm going to go ahead and toss another plus ten in a Restore. We're okay. Good magic shop. Don't take the Horde in the middle. I don't want to disrespect things too hard here with the Cloud and the Wheel present. Spikes. Spikes is a great way to risk our Gorgon. If we lose Gorgon, we lose the run. I don't need this relic. Whatever this relic is, I don't care. We're going to skip it. I could maybe take that. But I think we should respect. By the way, shark, hero. Hero shark. Look at him go. He's going to die. I don't care. It's fine by me. I am 100% going to hold on to Bramble Lash here, which does 200, which is a casual like 600 damage blast, by the way, for anyone keeping track. I do lose Collector. Shame, but it's fine. Ah, rough. Lose the Bramble Lash as well. Uh, that's okay. Shark does some good work here. Fine. Goodbye, Shark. Very fine. It could be much worse. We're going to go ahead and hold on to stuff upstairs. I don't like this overlap on the heavies here. Not good. I'm going to work on this middle guy, but I am going to try to keep my floor afloat a little bit. We at least managed to stop most of it. This is a really bad turn here. Extremely bad turn, but we managed to put some stuff through... I'm taking big hits here. We want to burn train stewards. Rough. I take... I get pummeled. And it's just going to have to be okay. There's there, This is the nature of this stuff. I'm going to burn the rail spike just for the incant here. Yeah, fine. 
Okay, burn this train steward. Energy siphon here. Heal up top. It's worth it. Okay. Hey man, you know what could have been worse? Losing. It doesn't matter. I have I drew the Bramble Lash, which does just auto-kill this particular combat. We get out of it. It was spicy though. We take a ton of damage. I'm gonna take preserved thorns. I did take the thorn casing. This is an excellent incanter. I'm gonna take the unnamed tome because obvious reasons, I think. All right. Tough. Very tough. Eight pyre health, not good. This is, I mean, this is what you gotta deal with, right? This is how it can be difficult. Things like taking those 15 shards could have spelled doom there. There are ways that I maybe could have done that a little. I'm trying to think about better plays there. You could, I think you do better playing bottom floor amazingly somehow i don't know there might be a bottom floor sentient play there and then i can have the bramble ash and everything but i think what we did was fine i should have foreseen the bramble lash dropping i think because of the one one two here that turn order is bad we'll never have it again because shark is dead but shark did potentially cost me that he did also save our run in a way because it meant that the backline guys got frosted so i don't know Anyway, we're going to go ahead and go to this magic shop and take some health. It doesn't matter. Going to 8 health is okay because 8 health is fine. It's fine. It's more than 0, and that's what matters. We do see the minus 2. It's a bummer, but it's okay. I'm going to probably put that into the Awoken's Real Spike. Give me the Remove Consume, maybe? Wait, what was the left one on here? 10 in Piercing. We could do some abs. I have the tenon piercing holdover restoration detonation as well. Honestly, if these end up being the only cards I play for the entire rest of the run, we're probably still winning. <laughs> right? If it's just Bramble Lash plus restoration detonation, I think we kill half the wave off the bat and then the Gorgon swings, which is pretty nifty. I'm going to go ahead and go in on that. I think it's wise. We'll take it because it's shown very strong. That minus two probably goes rail spike mode, but it's okay. I do think making things cheaper is your friend. If I roll into the Awoken's... Ah, 95 gold on the reroll. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and go in on it, right? I think it's wise to take more bonuses, even if I see it. Yeah, there it is. I mean, that's how people are infiniting on this. It's fine. I'm playing it cozy. I think we're okay. I'm going to take more plus tens. Uh, these are these are restores I'm happy to upgrade. And I'm thinking we're going to not go too hard on the rail spike here. 28 health, 60 here is fine. 75 is a little spicier. Let's move on. I'm okay with this. We've already removed a lot of our units, which I think helps a ton here. Armor. Hidden assault. I think we're okay to take this money kind of a weird twist this is a disrespectful play but it's okay we'll go ahead and do gorgon first sentient i am gonna play the preserved thorns but i think i'm gonna shoot downstairs and just straight up clear this wave which i quite like and then we just burn the rail spike here it's nice i like that play play the steel enhancer when we can i do want a frozen lance for money i missed it last time i'm gonna heal upstairs that's an okay bottom floor. Let's go ahead and keep keep the floor alive. Is fine. I want to play out the Wildwood Custodian when I see him. It's good. Restoration Detonation must be held, I think. I played it in the back there just to keep the damage on front so it pum pummels this Clip Defender. I want to keep her a little weakened here. I think we should be okay on this tank, but let's respect him a bit. And shoot him with some frostbite. I might give him that unnamed tome next turn as well. We'll see. We'll see how this looks. Because if I hit the Bramble Lash, I think we can get out pretty comfortably. Yeah, we can pummel one, pummel the other, pummel the other, and we're actually super chilling. Never mind. I'll leave that health in the back. It's okay. I didn't play the steward, but I'm sure we'll get another opportunity to do it. I'm not terribly worried. I mean, this is just sting, sting. 
restoration detonation clears it. I'm going to take mid-floor. How's mid-floor looking? I should be able to pummel two units, no problem, and then Gorgon can kill. So the, the plan then is we just move past this stuff. One of my units needs to be a little weakened so I can comfortably... Yeah, all right, cool. Fine. Good. All right, let's respect this guy. Unnamed home upstairs. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and play the Steel Enhancer because this is huge scaling. I then wish to... Blast one. Blast two. And... Heal. Yes, good. Okay, we didn't take any further damage here. Good, great work. Play the train steward. I want him to die. Excellent work. We've got a lot of damage up top. 20. I can do a truckload of damage there. So let's let's just go ahead and take some of these hits, and that's fine. Yeah, no problem. Goodbye, train steward. We've removed all of our units except for the important ones. And, I mean, we win this just because I can click Restoration Detonation. Actually, I think we win this off the back of just Bramble Lash, right? And then we blast here. Yeah, we do actually just kill her with spells, which is kind of unreal. We have such a high spell damage combat. And they're all Awoken spells, too, which is awesome. Engraft is a must-click here, in my opinion. Ice Storm. Drain's not bad. Do I really need it, though? I have HP and healing. It's like it's fine. I don't need, I don't want to deal with this. I'm just going to skip it. Ice Storm. I mean, really, I'm already paying enough Ember for very high powered, very high powered spells. We can just skip. None of those are important. Okay. All right. Give me the Vial of Tears. Excellent. Now we just have Pat. We basically have Steelworker on our floor. And give me Immortality Potion, which now makes Sentient Nuts. Awesome. Now what I can really do is what you do to go completely nuts here is we go right, we dupe Gorgon immediately, and we just start sending Sentient on a lower floor, and we have three Gorgons in play, which should pre-relentless most bosses very fast. And it's going to have a lot of life, right? These guys have 68 by default, easily incanting into the 100s. Yeah, we just take the dupe here. There's no reason not to. We win from this position. If we somehow see... Oh yeah, Warren Grindstone, sign me up. If we somehow run into... What is it? Founding Seal, that's the word. If I somehow run into Founding Seal... We can go completely mad with power. We're at a point where I feel like I can go a little hard here. I'm gonna go ahead and click the minus two here on Awoken's Rail Spike. That's fine. Intrinsic? I mean, you could intrinsic the rail spike. I don't really want to do that, though. This is not patient, so I don't care about intrinsic tome. I think I just chill here, honestly. It's fine. None of that's that important. And then, yeah, we have two of them. We're going to take space, make a third one on ring eight, and we win from there for sure. Because the crazy thing is just like, ah, the shame of double draw on them. It's okay. I think... Do I pivot? No. We just play only the one upstairs. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine, really. Honestly. We just chill. Sure. She she regenerates because of the thing, and we also get the power of Bramble Lash, which does just murder everything for anyone keeping track. We're crazy. Now I should I should encant upstairs. Whenever possible. That is a an incant up there. We should we should be incanting up here when we can. Which is fine. Yes. Yeah, it's good. I do want to play the Bramble Lash, but I don't want to incant up my hand. So let's just go ahead and lay it for no real reason. And then we'll draw two here and play these, which is fine. They're good. It's good to do it. I take, what, one damage? I mean, again, I'm getting the heal. I get the Steelworker value here, which is awesome. Cool. Let's go ahead and hit him for some number. I do... This is desperately my Preserve Thorns turn, which I am for sure just loading up here. It's a ridiculous amount of damage to be loading up. I can just kill a man downstairs, which I think is worth it. Pretty much every time I can do that, I should. We do push a ton of damage into this man. 434. 
sure. Good. Great. I don't think we're pre relentlessing Arcus because I didn't get a chance to play my other guy, but that's okay. We sting up here. What do I want to hold on to the most? Restoration detonation? Or. That's an interesting question. I'm just going to drop the unnamed tome. It, now that I can play them both, it's fine. The Tuffy. Let's go ahead and hold on to Bramble Lash. I think it's going to be fun. We easily clear these waves. I have very low fear. Extremely minimal fear on any of this. We are... We're good to go, I think. I just kill a man downstairs because I can. Sure. Seems good. This is kind of what I'm hoping it'll eventually be. Now, we do have an unfortunate turn upstairs. Rough. I need to incant once up here. I don't think I need to incant more than that. Yeah, we clear the wave with one incant. So let's go ahead and energy siphon, energy siphon, pop downstairs. Frozen Lance, Bramble Lash, and then we sting and we clear the floor and we're okay. Yeah, an unfortunate turn. I think we could have gone much harder there, but all good. Can I get rid of this two spell shield? I sure can. <laughs> I sure can. Frozen Lance, again. Wait for it. Bramble Lash. Have a nice day, buddy. That's, that's tough, my friend. That is tough. And then, I mean, we just kind of keep elevating this, right? It's like, oh no, sentient. Oh no, it's a free 200 damage. And then we'll incant upstairs a bit. I mean, we easy win up here if I, as long as I have a turn that can incant, which we for sure do. So, yeah, not even, we're not even worried about it. Yeah, this easy win. Cool. Great news. One attack comes in, and then we just go mad with power and kill. Seems good. I think there is a pre-relentless there somehow, depending on how your deck is set up, but I don't see it. Shard Channeler. I actually don't hate Shard Channeler downstairs behind Sentient. You can do some real work with that, huh? I am seeing a Steel Shot. Could give him some plus 25s. If you have to replay him a bunch, it's really rough, but pretty cool, actually. I don't hate this. Sure, bud. Sure, get in here. I do want space. Remember, I want space. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, Founding Seal would be the nuts if we could hit it. Do I go looking for it, though? That's the real question. I don't think I do. Do I go looking for it? Do I go looking for it? Maybe? And I don't know. The magic shop's pretty decent, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's not, it doesn't have removals. I'm going to go looking for it. I can afford to reroll here as money on the shop. Maybe I see an overstack. All right, we'll check it out. <laughs> All right, game. All right, game. I see where the 78k score came from. Got it. All right, the founding seal, top deck. All right, amazing. We're winning. We we've done it. I I don't even know what to tell you at this point. That was. That was <laughs> I'm over here toiling over whether I should look for it. I'm like, ah, oh, should I do it? Should I do it? That seems rough. Spike sentient, by the way. We're if we with shard channeler down, she's doing 80s, and we have endless on everything. It's nuts. We are outrageously powerful here. Penitent Remains is surprisingly decent. It tosses an extra plus 10 on your Gorgons, which is good. But I don't love the idea of not being able to incant because I'm drawing so much more trash. So I think we don't. I also don't really want to play Ember Stasis. I'm just going to skip here. I think it's fine. No worries. Is there anything else I could grab? I mean, I could take the Channel Heart for funsies. I don't really get benefit from Pyro House, Pyrestone Housing. I already have three upgrades. Very funny. Hmm. I'm going to reroll, see what we hit. Cursed Vines. Cursed Vines is a free incant. I should be happy to click it. Yes, I will be happy to click it. Cool. Free incant is your friend. We do get a purge and a plus 30 here. I could just plus 30 the engraft or something, but I could also take this opportunity to purge something. I think we just kind of chill here because I am going to go 15 plus on the dupe coming up. 
The purge is not bad, but I'm not seeing another magic shop, so really do I want to be playing frozen lances? No, not really. Not really. I'll purge a frozen lance. You got me. The plus 30, I mean, it is valuable. Like plus 30 resto detonation or something. I think we don't need it. I don't think it's going to... I'm I'm almost never playing it. Let's just move on. I, I'm just never going to play that over my other ones. Aggressive amulet. Come at me, brother. In fact, this is good because it means that Sentient gets hit by the tank dudes. Great. We didn't get completely blasted on draws here. Okay. I did it this way because I will have two Ember for next turn, at least. Because I'm not taking the Ember Drain upstairs. You could have possibly drawn... Ooh, do I hold on to Restoration Detonation here? I don't think so. Nah. Nah, it's fine. I want to Sting here. I'm even going to Self-Attack here. It's fine. Sure. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. We're going to go ahead and play our friend upstairs. I can actually, unbelievably, I can get the Collector thanks to Vinegrasp. Very cool. Happy to have done it. Sentient doing some good work downstairs. Love this for me. I am going to click the Steel Enhancer here, even though it leaves a Spell Chain copy in. I actually make Bramble Lash free, which is sick. Excellent. Honestly, great. We're going to lose Shard Channeler a bunch. It's not that big of a deal. She just murders guys. <laughs> she just kills them, which is amazing, I think. Is anyone damaged here? No, I think I already healed them up a bit. It's fine. I, do, I don't worry about the Ember Drain anyway, so this is really just Incant City. Yeah, it's just Incant City, because this doesn't matter. I kill a man downstairs. Seems good. Cool. It's actually good that that guy dies because it means he doesn't give me ever drain, which I'm good with. Cool. Cool. We're just going to keep stabbing upstairs. It's fine. And then we just kill the heavy with a 400 damage Bramble Lash every turn. Seems good. I guess I could have permafrost uh, silenced that guy, but I also don't really care that much. Truly, all good. Zap. We just zap this guy. He's having a bad day. Uh, I don't really feel like I care about this. Go ahead and bramble lash that guy. Whatever. I'm not. I'm not gonna press about the minus one Ember Drain here. I might care a little more if Mr. Shard Channeler were not free, but he is. So really, what am I worried about? Let's just go ahead and do big heals, right? There's no reason to do anything else. Play the bramble lash up here, and we hang out. Yeah, all good. Cause I can, it means I can save the unnamed tome for this guy, right? Which is good. Then I can give him the energy siphon, hit this man for 800 damage. That seems pretty decent. We do want to respect upstairs. I think it's important. Let's go ahead and Frozen Lance first. Draw him forward. Frozen Lance first. Take the incants. Fine. Again, I'm not afraid of anything here. Right. Yeah, I'm not afraid at all. That's so much damage. I mean, she straight up wins, right? Yeah, she got him. Got him with the Shard Channeler Sentient play. Seems good. It's honestly not bad. Very clean there. I like that. I'm going to click the Ensnare because it's a good zero cost incant. I might click the Urchin Spines. Urchin Spines lets you do some silly stuff here. I'm going to click that. It's a zero cost, very powerful play on this particular run. And we go to the dupe. This is playing for itself here. At this is scales. You want more spell weakness? It's pretty cool. The dupe here is just, here's my third friend. There he is. Look at him go. And then we toss some plus 25s or something. Yeah, large stone into shard channeler seems okay. I'm just looking to make this guy not die to spikes damage or something like sweep damage or something. He just needs to live with sentient. I'm not going to re-roll here. I think the angle is simply just large stone, battle stone, and we're done with him. Removals are going to be frozen lances, I think. Maybe one of these restores that's not upgraded. They're all kind of bad. 
It's good to get some clears though. I'm happy to do this. We'll cut a restore. That doesn't, I don't need the restore for anything. Frozen lands, goodbye. I'm probably removing a few more, honestly. Temper Talisman, Priory's Cloak, Tethys Scales. They're all fine. I'm going to reroll. Maybe there's something better. Nah, whatever. I think I just buy removals and clean this run up. Buy removals on Frozen Lances. At this point, if I could draw no Frozen Lances, that would be great, I think. You could easily infinite on this run. You remove all your units. You have the Awoken's Rail Spikes. You could go ahead and just play these like 50 times in a, in a turn with a single Eel Gorgon and do like 9 million damage. I see how you can get the 78k pretty easy here. We're not going to hit 78k, and that's honestly just going to be fine. We are easily going to win this run. Do I take money just to buy another removal? Maybe, actually. Cut that last, re cut a restore out or something. I could cut the bad restoration detonation with it, which I actually do think is relevant. I'll do it. I feel strong enough I'm not worried about this, so cut the bad restoration detonation out and we chill. Cool. All right, seems good to me. 65 gold remaining, 125 out of 100. This is an easy win from this position. If somehow a Gorgon does die, they're also... I think they actually do clear this endless. They do. Yeah, so it doesn't actually help them. Oh no, I might lose one, whatever, it's fine. The likelihood I pre-relentless something is very high, and all the backlines are dead to sentient anyway, so whatever. Like, here you go. Sentient. Shard Channeler. Nailed it. Morgan chilling upstairs. Again, though, I dropped both my holdovers, but it's not that big of a deal, really. I'm not pressed about it, actually. It's just kind of annoying, right? It's like, ah, my draws, of course. Why not? Play one upstairs, we get the vine grasp up here. I mean, here we do just kind of go ham. Incant. Incant. I actually think I want a flash freeze here to pop this spell shield or damage shield, rather. We do a thousand damage on that turn, which is a lot of damage. So keep that in mind. Well, we clear most of this floor. And then we're going to just drop in third Gorgon here. I'm going to play Mr. Engraft. I am just going to keep incanting here. I see no reason to do anything else. And then we sting. Yeah, I mean, draw me 10 cards, please. This turn would have killed the boss if you were on that floor, which is kind of hilarious to me. Come back upstairs, please. All right, cool. Cool, great news. We're going to go ahead and go ballistic here, I think. Yeah, we're going to do make this as big of a turn as physically possible. Sadly, my restoration detonation does not pay out here, but it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and ping this guy in back. I don't feel like taking that hit. I'm going to go ahead and hit the rail spike now. I give up both my incants, but I'm actually fine with this, right? We're going hard here. Yeah, we get the kill on this turn, right? We do get the Pre-Relentless, simply because this floor does way too many hits to be stopped. And it does plenty of damage. It's like 82 damage machine gun. This really is the Gorgon machine gun, isn't it? We didn't even get to the third guy. That would have killed Divinity. That's a very good combat. I mean, that's that's what you're looking for, right? I've got Founding Seal. How did they... How did... Oh, man. This really does pop off. I see how it gets blessed, right? The early game didn't feel that bad because of the Gorgon, but there was a... Tr I mean, I'll talk about it a little more, but... Oh, look, we actually don't get all the Gorgons out. My gosh. It happens. It's cool. Just incant up, and I don't really care that much how this looks. I'll be able to draw around fast. I removed enough cards. It's okay. All right, there's another friend. Good job. Well done. I'm going to keep one of these guys on this floor because it's smart to do it. I'll hold over the restoration detonation. Yeah, sure. Sure, seems good. Anyone I... Actually, if I pulled you forward, you just straight up almost pass away. You do pass away. Very cool. Yeah, sure, we'll do this. It's all good. And I'll play it up top fine. We do only 200 here. I can, I can build up a ridiculous turn here for sure. I can see it happening. Okay, this is a very good turn. Yeah, this is a great turn. 
Cool, I can just blast a man here, which is amazing. Great job. We're gonna go ahead and click Steel Enhancers here because I think they're very good for what we're trying to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and preserve Thorns this out and do a ridiculous sum of damage here. I'm kinda surprised that one of these guys lives. I could sting here, sting here, and we get another kill, which I think is worth doing. Sting here, yeah, fine. I do 2,000 damage on that turn, which is pretty awesome. If I had been able to get the third guy down, I think we get the pre-relentless on that turn, which is cool. I do think we have to silence mid-floor here. Just being, a, being honest with you, I think that has to happen. We're going to go ahead and drop in last friend upstairs, which I like. We can get the Restoration Detonation played, which does just straight up kill a guy. I'm dropping Charge Channeler here because I think it's important to have done it. Yeah, unfortunately, Sentient does look pretty rough for that particular turn. So let's get these Urchin Spines on that floor. I'm going to click the Rail Spike upstairs to draw through a little bit. Bad hits, but it's okay. We still do an absolute truckload of damage here. Man, we almost pre-relentless on this turn. If I had actually just urchin spined up here without... If I had run the math, I think I would have seen it. That's okay. I'm not terribly upset about it. Sentient returns. There you go, champ. We, we kill on this turn instead. Fine. Like, yeah, fine. We did it. Good job. This is simply too powerful to be stopped. It's ridiculous. Cool. We could have gotten one turn faster if I had just done the math, but it's all good. This is an easy crush at the end. I mean, the founding seal is an unnecessary high roll. This is not only doubling our scaling, it is doubling our... It's doubling our incants for multi-strikes. So we're hitting twice as many times. This is a pretty good score. It's not going to be top score, but it's a pretty good score. Yeah, 66k seems good. There's an infinite on here. I'm not surprised we missed it. Let's see if the top player did infinite here. Did you do it? Yeah. Yeah, they did. That's an easy infinite. You should be getting like... Yeah, nine turn, nine turn. Yeah, easy win. Uh, it's, a, it's a super easy win. When you, Once you see it, it's very easy to pull this off. They just have th four of these. Yeah, it's fine. I, I knew this was here as soon as I was like, yeah, you know what? Those high scores probably have these infinites. Yeah, I'm not even really going to talk about it. I don't think the run's particularly interesting beyond that. I could scroll through all this. Jim Bob is our submitter. Let me see if I can find them. They're probably on the lower end of the winning spectrum. Where'd they end up? Nope, still not there. There you are. Yeah, okay. I mean, they, see, exactly. They took, right, it took an irrecoverable amount of damage as a way of viewing it. Uh, this Ring 4 does look spicy if you're playing this particular approach. This run looks very similar to mine. I'm not surprised that it hits this same point, honestly. Seems reasonable. But then, yeah, it pops off. They find the Founding Seal as well. Makes a lot of sense. They also took the Cracked Helmet, which is kind of fun, right? But I don't think you needed this. You, might, you could have gotten away with it. I mean, I guess they kept their Titan Sentry alive which is kind of cool, and then used the Endless on it. That's fun. I like that. I considered it, I suppose, but honestly, I didn't need it. Sentient is better when you have spikes at this point. With Without pivoting, straight up Sentient with Endless from Immortality Potion is stronger than Titan Sentry, unbelievably. It's one of, the, one of her strongest modes, in my opinion. It doesn't come up very often because you have to hit a Malika event and be able to take it comfortably, but when it hits, it hits. Let's find me now. I'll just talk through this briefly. I think we played a fairly comfortable run. I mean, truly, uh, again, I took even more damage on Ring 4. An irrecoverable amount of damage. 55 damage taken. Uh, but could I have saved some more there? I don't know. Our, uh, our specific elite upgrades were very threatening. I could have not played the Shark. Or I think the alternative approach was possibly to play Bottom Floor. Maybe maybe bottom floor but i don't think that mm, it maybe gets there we had a really bad turn where i drew what three train stewards and the wildwood custodian at the same time as literally one incant so i mean it, it happens we get we just had the absolute worst draw order of it possible i think 
and we ate dirt as a result, but we had the pyre health for it. I, I don't really see these as irrecoverable amounts of damage. Irrecoverable amount of damage is going to zero health. Straight up. That's that's the answer to your question that you're asking. What is an irrecoverable amount of damage when you die? Going to eight health, it's fine. I took some health in the next ring, and then I think we literally never took damage for the entire rest of the run because it cleaned up so hard. Yeah. Some other fun things. I mean, I really, early on, I did things like Holdover, Restoration, Detonation, and Bramble Lash, thinking that these would be core to my run. But then, in the end, we found the Founding Seal, and we had the Cursed Vines, and the combination of these simply meant that these cards were no longer even relevant because I was not playing them with Sentient. The point of this is to slam these into your units that are either hurt, which could be a Gorgon, or are Sentient, and killing guys. But... Eventually, it got so out of control that it just made way more sense to have three Gorgons on the floor. It just it just does make way more sense. Make another one, get over it. Uh, so there was some pivoting along the way. So that's kind of why maybe some of this doesn't look as clean as it could have. It certainly goes to show that if I knew a lot of this ahead of time, I mean, I don't think I take this Restoration Detonation Holdover. Maybe I don't take the Bramble Lash. I don't know. One of these probably drops off. Maybe I wait until I get the minus two on the Bramble Lash, and then this is actually a sick card. But you have to understand, you didn't know it was coming, and I felt like I needed it then. So I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you make a play that makes sense in the moment, and later on you go, dang, I didn't need to do it. But all good. We still take the win. I'm happy to have done it. Fun run. Good. I don't get to see a Gorgon run that often, so nice to have it show up. This is a very powerful Gorgon run, by the way, so good stuff. I think this is more on the blessed side than the cursed side, so I guess in the end you do get a blessed run, kind of. I can see the discussion point here, right? I think that there's those combats, those ring fours. I think you just take spikes on this and you straight up lose, right? If you, if you click that spikes, you go, ah, oh, I've simply passed away. And you could lose a run that is otherwise a slam dunk to win. So I'll let you go there. It brings us up to 61 wins in the series. Incredible news. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. Uh, as always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.